Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our daily devotions with Pastor Sutton here on this Monday, February 27th. Feels like a Monday. I feel like a Monday. I could have stayed in bed. It has been sleeting for the last half hour, and now it started snowing. So the, the Aki weather, man, my camera's pointing like at the ceiling or something here. Let me just bring that down a little bit. Okay. Uh, the, the, the Aki weather, icky weather that we're supposed to have today um, is here uh, for those that were expecting it. Um, sleet mixed with snow, mixed with yuck. I, the, the, early this morning, the traffic on the interstate going by here, 51, um, 39, was uh, fairly heavy. Well, I guess 39 technically doesn't come past Wausau, but you guys know what I mean. And if you don't, it doesn't really matter. Um, but it, it, the traffic was fairly heavy early, but now it's it's died down to almost nothing. And the schools up here did cancel, at least Tomahawk did cancel today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't cancel anymore, right? Because if you have a snow day or a cancellation, you got to make it up. So they have a remote learning day. Thank you. Thank you, COVID in 2020, uh, for bringing us these these wonderful new terms, um, which uh, save the school districts from having to deal with makeup days in the spring. Um, and they do. You know what? There will be some work, but it's not the. It's it's more than they would have on a day that they a snow day that they would have in the schedule. That they just cancel and they have nothing. But a lot of times, not all the teachers put out stuff for the kids to do on that day huh yeah that's the hard one is that is that they can't have their practice for the musical this afternoon and that's coming up on friday so they've got uh they're, they're, mm. we talked to one of the directors yesterday the musical director and he said he said well we can get by without monday but if we miss anything after that it's not gonna be good so bonnie and i were gonna provide well, food, food for the kids, Sam, sub, Subway sandwiches <clears throat> for the kids today. Um, but since they're not having it, that's canceled. And I guess later in the week we'll be doing that because it's long practice. They're, they're getting to the point now where they do full run through of the entire performance uh, with tech in costumes and everything. I mean, the idea is that by by Thursday's practice, they go through without any hiccups. And on Friday, they have their first live performance. Um you know, I, I and I remember doing that stuff as a as a kid. I was I was uh, um, I was in stage crew. I wasn't my buddy Ken Brown and I and Nikki. Uh, what's I can't remember Nikki's last name now and um, Paul and uh, Benjamin. Yeah, we all we, we were the the lighting crew and the sound crew. Um, Good times, good times. Life was simpler. <laughs> hey, uh, good morning to you. Uh, uh, let's see who's with us on this first Monday uh, in Lent. Uh, well, look at that. I typed good mon ring. Well, you know, at least I typed something. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. There's Connie with smiley faces for everybody. Jill and John, good morning. Uh, starting to snow. Okay, well, it's just starting. For, you know, it started to snow for us after it had been sleeting for a half hour. Bob, Verna, good morning. Bob and Jeannie, good morning. Oh, there's Kanye again. Oh, it posted. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Harshaw checking in overall. Yeah, all over the place. Uh, looked like a fine rain coming down so far. Yeah, we had, and you know, it was, I knew it was sleet because we had that, sound on the windows you know you know the sound of sleet hitting windows right that that um sound of hard water hitting a window uh, so we had we had uh, uh we had rain rain and sleet so um let's see here uh so connie and robin jerry good morning oh 31 degrees over in michigan well all right what are we where are we at we're at it's chosen not to show me here on the screen here. It just is snowing now. Well, thank you. How American, you know? Oh, 26 is what we've got. The weather, the weather, can't look out the window. It's got to tell me it's snowing now. Um. So, yeah, good morning, Jerry. And good morning to you and Deb and Grant. 
and Mushtak, good morning, good evening to you as well. Oh, today is the day. Well, you know what? I don't know if UPS is going to make it here, but today is the day I'm supposed to get um, my new stuff. So after we're done here today, uh, my study is going to get cleaned and tore up a little bit because I need to raise the bookshelf that's in front of me a little bit for um, for for better lighting, and I've got to get some stuff positioned. And I was thinking about switching my position a little bit in here, but I, I don't think I'm going to. I think it's going to stay here, the desk really does work best in this orientation so um, yeah and you can tell that I'm kind of all over the place it's just it's Monday morning it's Monday morning maybe if we get into what we're supposed to be doing here or what we're all here for oh uh, good morning to the oh hey Judy Judy Yankee good morning to you freezing rain in Bear Creek I believe that without too much trouble at all and there's Glenn good morning Glenn Glenn I gotta tell you just so you know, and you'll understand this, Glenn. Bonnie's wearing pink. I didn't skip your hello. Oh, well, yours was in the middle of everybody else's as it popped up here. So there's Bonnie. She says good morning, and she says 26 and sleeting. Yeah, uh, yeah, and she's wearing pink. It, it, for those in the know, you understand, but when Bonnie wears pink as a child, it used to rain every time she wore pink pants. Uh, Glenn and Debbie will vouch for that. Um, all right. Let's, let's, uh, what are we doing? Let's get into this. Um, Lutheran service book. Oh, uh, see, just all over the place. To those watching behind the scenes, hello, good morning uh, on this Monday. To those watching on YouTube later today when I, um, when I post it there after 11 o'clock, hello and good day to you. Um, remember, share, like, subscribe. Join our little group here on Facebook so you get the uh, the notifications when stuff comes up. So, all right. Lutheran Service Book, page 295. Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. The Morning Order. I have my Treasury of Daily Prayer right here. What I don't have is my mind today because it's Monday and I just want to do nothing. So, all right. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Monday's my day off, you know. I don't always, brain's not always clicking the way it should. Psalm 2, our psalm today, Psalm 2. <clears throat> Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast the, away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. And the in the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> you can hear in the psalmist here, um, the Spirit guiding him towards what uh, the Lord, what, what the Father will say in Jesus' baptism and in the transfiguration. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Uh, and then I lost it. Here it is. Um, I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Um, pointing towards that, those events of the coming of Christ. 
Um, ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage, the ends of the earth, your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Uh, Christ comes and he is the, the cornerstone, uh, the scandalizone, the, the stone of, of entrapment upon which some will fall and be shattered and others will be crushed by it. Um, if you fall upon the stone that is the cornerstone of Christ and are dashed into pieces in the midst of your sin, he can put you back together. Um, but if you refuse to fall upon him and he falls upon you, the law comes upon you, you're crushed to dust and there's no putting dust back together. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, we're going to move on right on to, cause we've got, um, a lot of a lot today and and i'm i'm only where i am so mark chapter 3 verses 1 through 19 here <clears throat> again mark is just mark mark does a good job of just moving through the text quickly um you know remember everything in mark is happening immediately with with a sense of urgency um moving right through uh all the things um that are going on so uh we get a lot in Mark, but we get it quickly without a lot of depth or detail. So Mark chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Hey, I didn't see... I didn't see uh, Kathy here. I hope she's okay. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there with a withered hand. And they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with a withered hand, Come here. And he said to them, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill it? Or to kill, rather. But they were silent. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to them, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him, and he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed many so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named to be apostles, so that they might be with him. And he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder. Oh, okay, yeah, Boanerges is the... Is Okay, an alliteration. Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas... And James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon, the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, in Matthew, <clears throat> around this point, we would get um, the Sermon on the Mount. In Luke, it's the Sermon on the Plain, and it happens later in chapter 11. Uh, yeah, chapter 11, instead of chapter 5. Um, and, and that's the going up on the mountain and calling to him those whom he desired, the apostles. Because when, when Jesus goes up on the mountain, Matthew, um, his disciples come to him, and he sits down and opens his mouth uh, and teaches them. Um, and the interesting thing there, uh, Jesus opens his mouth. It doesn't say he begins to speak, because the opening of the mouth is allowing the Spirit to come forth and, and teach those things uh, of Scripture. 
Um, but backing up here to the beginning of chapter three, the man with a withered hand. This is um, in, in Mark's gospel. This is kind of the, the pivot point um, where the, if I, I'm just double checking myself here. Um, um, uh, yeah, okay. The, the disciples have been questioning him. And, and with with me not having Saturday with you because of the men's Bible breakfast, and, and of course Sunday we were in church, we didn't read um, the rest of chapter 2, where the, where the Pharisees and the scribes begin to question Jesus. Um, you know, they, they ask him about fasting. Um, um, and, and Jesus makes the proclamation that the Sabbath, um, the day of rest, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Um, and so the Pharisees have been chasing him a little bit. And, and this, this event uh, in the synagogue uh, with a man who has the withered hand um, is a setup. It's a setup. Um, they've, they've arranged for this man to be there uh, before Jesus um, uh, so, that, so that they would see what he would do. Right now, I know what he would do, and I'm pretty sure you know what he would do. Right, God's the co the compassion that Christ has. I uh, the, the, the Greek word splugniste, the inward wrenching of the gut. Um, uh, compassion is what Christ has for all of mankind, and that's what that's what leads him to the cross is the compassion that he has for us. Even even though by his human nature he's terrified. Of, of dying of, of what will come um, and yet he knows that that what he does will free mankind from his father's wrath so he so he does it out of compassion um, and so this this man with a withered hand is there and and they're watching him they're watching him because it's a setup will he will he heal on the Sabbath because healing's a work and and the commandment given by God, is to do no work on the Sabbath, right? And the Pharisees and scribes have done, well, the Pharisees have done a, a good job. The Jews in general have done a good job of, of setting up rules and regulations uh, around the law so that uh, they can't violate. And, and, and in fact, they've, they've set them up in such a way that they can keep the law, which uh, creates a false sense of security, a false sense of righteousness among them. And Jesus sees the man with the withered hand. What do they expect? He's been going through all the, all the cities and villages, preaching and healing, casting out demons. Um, so he says to the man with the withered hand, "Come here, come here." Right? I, there's a YouTuber I watch, Jacob something or other, and he does he does his videos. Um, they're usually reaction videos, but he's he's holding he's holding his his phone kind of over the corner of his eye like this and he's shooting in the mirror so you're you're watching him in the mirror he says come here and he and he uses the zoom to bring you in closer come here come here right um and he says to the before he does anything he says to the to the pharisees the teachers of the law there is it lawful on the sabbath to do good or to do harm to save a life or to kill that's a fairly straightforward question, right? Because if he does nothing and he has the ability to do it, it's harm. But he has the ability to do it. And so to heal on the Sabbath is good, right? I mean, if, if somebody were to suffer an injury, a cut or a broken leg or something on the Sabbath, you're going to do what you can to heal them. Um, you're not going to let them die. You're going to save life. That's, that's part of what the Sabbath is for, is the saving of our lives, right? The rest that restores. Our Sabbath is found not in a day, as commanded by God, but rather our Sabbath now is found in Christ who gives us rest and restores us and reconciles us to his Father, our Father, by, by his holy blood shed upon the cross, right? So is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good? Well, that's the point of the Sabbath, to do good. And after all, 
After all, the workers in the temple are working. They're doing the, the vocation that God has given them not to read and preach and teach and do, right? I mean, I was going to say my hardest work is on Sunday morning, but I'm not entirely sure that's a, a fair statement. But certainly what I do on Sunday is work. Is it better to save a life or kill? In another place, Jesus says, which of you, which of you having a, and I think it was a donkey, but which of you having a donkey who fell down the well, fell down a well on the Sabbath, would not work to free him, right? Um, and they're silent because they don't have an answer. They can't, if they say, if they say it's um, lawful to kill on the Sabbath, well, that would violate a commandment, right? Thou shalt not kill, or thou shalt not commit murder. Um, and if they say that it's good to save a life, well, that's work. And, and so then they're going against their own restrictions. They have nothing to say. And it kind of makes them angry. Jesus looks at the man and says, stretch out your hand and restores his hand. And the Pharisees go out and immediately hold counsel with the Herodians, with the the Jewish ruler ruling class, the courtiers of, of King Herod, um, how to destroy him. That's how to put Jesus to death. It's not just a matter of any more of, of dis, dis, uh, dishonoring him or, or, or showing him to be a bad teacher, discrediting him, but, but rather it is a, they, they want him dead and gone. And then they go to the sea, um, we don't get to, we don't get to see the events, but they, they, he has the boat ready. This is when he stands in St. Peter's boat and preaches to the crowds and winds up calling St. Peter as a disciple. Um, Peter's forced to sit in the boat for hours while Jesus preaches um, and hears the word and believes. Um, the demons are calling him the Son of God, but again in Matthew, in Mark's gospel, shh. It's, it's a secret. Don't tell anybody. And certainly don't, demons aren't the ones to be confessing who Christ is. That confession must come out of man's mouth. Not out of demons. And then the naming of the 12 apostles. So we have the names of all of them um, listed here. Simon called Peter. James and John, the brothers of thunder, because they make a lot of noise. Um, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Tom, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, and uh, Simon, the second Simon, and uh, Judas Iscariot, who betrays him. And, and by saying that, uh, Mark gives us a foreshadowing of what will come on the night when Christ is betrayed. Our takeaway here is that compassion of Christ and being reminded constantly um, that, that he called the disciples in the apostles to preach and teach that word to us so that we too would know the compassion of Christ, that he dies to save us. Is it legal to save or kill, to do good or to do harm? Well, by the compassionate heart of Christ, we are shown that giving life, healing, and doing good, even if that good appears evil, here in the, in the crucifixion of Christ, it appears evil to us and ugly, but it's the most beautiful thing that the Father uh, could give us and has seen. There is beauty to the Father in his Son on the cross, because it's done not for his Son, but for you. And it saves you from sin, death, and hell. Amen. Let's look to our readings for today. Um, remember, during this time, we're we're doing uh, readings. Oh, wait a minute now. I've got two things here. Well, I put in the I put in the post that we were going to do Latin catechesis, so I'm going to not do the writing from Luther that's here, um, but I'm going to do the Latin catechesis of the first commandment um, from the large catechism, which is also Luther, by the way. I heard groaning out in the living room out there. So here, the first commandment, you all know it. You shall have no other gods. Now, uh, uh, the, that's how we teach it today. You shall have no other gods. 
probably most of you listening learned it as, you shall have no other gods before me. Uh, but today, uh, well, since 1986, yeah, since 1986 in our catechism, it's taught simply, you shall have no other gods. Um, which perhaps is a better way, I don't know. But here's, here's what Luther writes in the large catechism. We're going to start uh, section one, which is, the first, which is the commandments, and it's going to be paragraphs two and three, paragraph 24 and paragraph 26. So uh, here, here we go. A God, a God, means that from which we are to expect all good and in which we are to take refuge in all distress. So to have a God is nothing other than trusting and believing him with the heart. I have often said that the confidence and faith of the heart alone make both God and idol. If your faith and trust is right, then your God is also true. If your faith and trust is wrong, on the other hand, if you trust is false, then you do not have the true God. For these two belong together, faith and God. Now, I say that whatever you set your heart on and put your trust in is truly your God. We are to trust in God alone and look to him and expect from him nothing but good, as from one who gives us body, life, food, drink, nourishment, health, protection, peace, <clears throat> and all the necessaries of both temporal and eternal things. He also preserves us from misfortune. And if any evil befall us, he delivers and rescues us. So does God alone, as we have been, as has been said well enough, from whom we receive all good and by whom we are delivered from all evil. Even though we experience much good from other people, whatever we receive is by God's command or his arrangement. It's all received from God. For our parents and all rulers and everyone else with respect to his neighbor have received from God the command that they should do us all kinds of good. So we receive these things not from them, but through them from God. For creatures are only the hands, channels, and means by which God gives all things. So he gives to the mother breasts and milk to offer to her child. And he gives corn and all kinds of produce from the earth for nourishment. None of these blessings could be produced by any creature of itself. So a little bit of the large catechism written by Martin Luther. You know, we've got the small catechism that teaches the six chief parts, the essentials of the faith. Uh, but then the large catechism was written to expand upon those things, uh, further teaching um, of what Christ, what God has given us in Christ Jesus, in, in His law and in the creed and the and so on. All right, uh, let's continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, prepare us for that eternal Sabbath when You will rest in us, just as now You work in us. The rest that we shall enjoy will be yours, just as the work that we now do is your work done through us. But you, O Lord, are eternally at work and, e and eternally at rest. It is not time that you see, or in time that you move, or in time that you rest. Yet you make what we see in time. You make time itself and the repose which comes when time ceases. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And where'd my... Oh, is this? Yeah, here we go. Uh, and we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What? Oh, um, in our we're, we're at the end of February, beginning of March, and for the last two or three months, we've been using this little prayer book. I'm going to switch to this one here for the for the rest of March. So, uh, just you know, we've used them before. So for ourselves and others on this Monday morning, Lord, in this morning hour, I come boldly to your throne of grace and full assurance that there, shall, there I shall obtain mercy and find grace and help in my times of trouble. I need your help and your grace as I again return to the routine of my vocation and schedule. Grant me true faithfulness in the performance of my calling. Guard me against becoming selfish, careless, and lazy and carrying out my daily work so that all I do has not only the appearance of being pleasing among men, but also is true service to my neighbor that I may be a servant of Christ, doing the will of God. Grant to all who are out of work useful employment. Feed us all with ne food necessary for our lives and teach us to receive it with thanksgiving. Grant us the godliness and contentment without which there can be no true happiness. And let us so walk through the things temporal that we may not lose the things eternal. This I ask for Jesus' sake. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon those this day who suffer. Uh, to be, give, give to those who must travel during this uh, time of ice and snow and slush and yuck uh, safety as they travel. Keep them, their, their wheels of their vehicles safe on the road and their feet firmly on the ground when walking. Uh, we ask, O oh Lord, for those who are suffering, whether it be in body, soul, or mind, that you would give them strength. Especially we pray this day for Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, Ashley, John, Renee, Shazad, Holden, and all those who are suffering before you. Hear also the prayers of those who, others who call upon your name. Uh, grant them strength in their suffering, endurance by the faith that you've given them, and remind them always, assuring them of the promise of everlasting life through you. This we ask in the name of our dear Lord, who is even Jesus the Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created all and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions for this Monday, February 27th to a close. March is almost upon us. Uh, if you go out and you're living in the area I live in, be careful. Um, otherwise, if you can, stay home, stay safe. Um, God's peace be with you. Uh, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning, Tuesday morning, for our daily devotions together, a little time in God's word. God's peace.